of uh, probably too little. Uh, I think that what I learned on Tinnitus is that it's a very difficult question because we know very little things and uh, the, the exploration is really difficult. So we know what's in, we know nothing. Uh, that's the first time hearing of it. So um, it sounds interesting. I'd love to learn more. I have not really much uh, experience with tinnitus other than a few friends having it, but not, not in research. I don't know too much, honestly. I just recently started uh, working in the this kind of field here, uh, but I know it just has to do with like sound in the ears and like ringing and stuff. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I do know it's an issue that plays a lot of people, and it can lead to mental health issues. Very little, very little. And then I know tinnitus because some family members have had, um, you know, this uh, uh, ringing in the ear. I think it is an um, an under research or not uh, very well understood area of research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know I have it, uh, and I know that it's not well understood at all, and there's no really good treatments except for the psychological adjustment to it. There's a number of theories that are like 30 to 50 years old that anything that that's old is probably wrong. Uh, I had tinnitus before, so I have cochlear implants, and then I lost my hearing suddenly. And then before, so, and then I got my cochlear implants almost right after my hearing loss, but there was a deafness period. So I think tinnitus is a way for the brain to compensate for the loss of input, I think. So when I couldn't hear anything at that time, my brain was just going crazily. I, I think I was going through some music hallucination. So music uh going on over and over and over again so it was very um it was very devastating and then i'm glad that after cochlear implant surgery uh the tinnitus actually went away i still have some when i take off my cochlear implants i still have some residual tinnitus it's just that when i take uh, turn them on i couldn't know i, I wouldn't notice because um i think the tinnitus part got buried by the acoustic electrical simulation. Uh, I am a professor in uh, hearing and speech sciences at Vanderbilt University. I know a little bit about tinnitus. For those of us that work with animals, it is very hard to know when an animal has tinnitus. Um, there are current tests, but it is never... It, it, it's currently impossible to know unambiguously if those tests actually report tinnitus or if they're uh, reporting something else that's correlated with tinnitus. So just given that, it's it's very hard to uh, study tinnitus with great confidence in animal models. So uh, tinnitus is the self-perception of sounds that's not actually there. So it's a psychoacoustic phenomenon. A lot of people describe it as like a buzzing, a ringing, a, a, a crickets, a chirping sounds. Um, and with some people, this could be absolutely debilitating to their life. There are some other people where you can just learn to deal with it, and it's just something in the background for them every day. Um, it could be, it could be intermittent. It could be permanent. It could be you know ongoing, constant. Um, and it really fluctuates and varies depending on the person and depending on their situation and depending on what their life looks like. During my audiology school, we have a class that's dedicated to tinnitus. And so we go over a couple different ideologies, causes, uh, backgrounds of it, what a couple different theories on what's happening, as well as a couple different uh, papers of research about what's out there on, you know, what have people found to be causes of or increasing of, things like that, um, as well as we've talked about treatments, uh, different options for people out there, different ways to subjectively measure um, what's going on in their life with tinnitus, 
issues with it and things like that, as well as, you know, maybe some possible ways to help relieve it, uh, possible ways to help, I wouldn't say treat it, but definitely try to overcome it. Well, so uh, my background's in cochlear implant research. And um, one thing that I find interesting uh, is that uh, cochlear implant recipients, many of them, uh, their tinnitus doesn't go away, but uh, getting the implant reduces their, their tinnitus. And I guess one of the main things that I've learned about it is that it's highly individualized. And for many people, it, it can fluctuate a lot. Uh, and this fluctuation and the severity of it is, you know, very different across different patients. Um, and the pathways aren't uh, well understood in terms of what's causing it. Um, but one positive thing is that for, for most uh, cochlear implant recipients that I've encountered and that I've heard about, uh, the implant does uh, reduce the severity uh, a bit. Yeah, especially from a patient perspective and knowing some friends that have uh, suffered from it, I, I think there certainly should be more research about it.